Hello everybody and welcome back to the second episode of reviving the 79 RX-7 here on the Rotaries and Jet Skis channel. Uh, in the last video I went through and started stripping the motor down uh, of all of its emission stuff, took the intake manifold off, the emissions one, and then realized I actually even needed to use a different uh, intake manifold. But in this video, to start off, I'll be going through and turning the motor over by hand with a little bit of ATF in it to free everything up and checking to make sure none of the apex seals are stuck uh, compressed in. Because I actually had this happen on the 13B that is now in my daily driver RX-7. Uh, I thought the motor was dead, but it actually turned out it had an apex seal that it was just stuck in because it's been sitting on a compression cycle for who knows how many years. So I had freed that up and the motor ended up having perfect compression and that's why that motor is now in my car. And I don't want that to be the case with this and I don't really want to start it up like that. So uh, to start off, I'm going to be go ahead and taking the exhaust manifold off so I can reach in the exhaust ports and actually see, or not see, feel if the apex seals are moving freely. And then I'll start putting some ATF into the motor and spinning it over by hand. So I'll go ahead. Uh, I, got, I got a new little fun piece of equipment now to help. I got a tripod. Uh, so now I'll be able to actually <laughs> leave the camera up and it can look down into the engine bay while I'm working. So I'll get you set up in the tripod and then get you pointed down at the exhaust manifold and I'll get to taking it off. Okay, for those of you who've never taken off an intake or exhaust manifold, sorry, for a rotary before, it's actually really easy. It just has four bolts, two on the top, two on the bottom, four nuts rather that have studs that go into the motor. Normally, they are 14 millimeters. This one, I believe, probably they must have been broken off or something because these are 15s. So all you need to do is just go through and take all these off. Now, there is a good chance when you go through it's going to pull the, uh, sorry, there. It's going to pull the uh, stud out with it, uh, especially if it's never actually been out of the car before. Uh, had that happen uh, quite a few times. But in this case, at least this first one, it seems to be coming off. No issue. Now, <clears throat> the original style nuts. They actually have a, they have a little extended piece up here at the top that's used to lock it in. So that's another reason I can tell that this is not an OEM one. Uh, I believe they don't actually have washers either. Now, obviously y'all can see this is not a factory exhaust manifold. This is a older racing beat exhaust manifold. Uh, the factory ones were cast iron bricks basically. Terrible, terrible for flow. Uh, you see, right here, the stud just came out on this one. Uh, they're coming out really easy though. Um, and after this, I can show you how to actually get, yeah, they put anti seize on it, uh, how to get this nut off the stud. And then I'll show you how I get them back into the block. So uh, I'll cut this right here. And I will go ahead and finish those last two bolts. And then I'll show you how to get that stud, or that nut off that stud, and how to get the stud back into the motor. Okay, everyone. So this is one of the studs that came out. I went ahead and I took two of the other nuts. And I went and I backed them up super tight with two wrenches up against each other. This right here, this is the nut that is actually stuck. So now that I have these two nice and tied up against each other, I can put this wrench on, and then if we come down here, hopefully it'll focus. I can put this over here. This is set to loosen. Normally you would do this in like a vise, and it would be a lot easier, but you go like this, and you see now that nut is coming off, uh, and the vise just helps everything stay a lot more steady. But as you can see, that uh, nut has started to come off. Now I'll just go ahead real quick, get this off.
Okay. So now, right here, that nut's about off. And boom. But then you've still got these two nuts on there. So basically, at this point, you need a deep well. Put that in there. Put that on the other one. Break them loose like that. Then you can just, so it'll come off. It's just a little tight on there. I can't do it with my fingers. But then you'll have yourself a stud. So next I'll show you actually putting it into the motor. Okay y'all, so I just lied there a second ago and I said that I would show y'all how to put the exhaust manifold studs back in next, so that's not what I'm going to be doing. Actually I'm going to be talking about what I'm going to be doing with the motor now that I have the exhaust manifold off. So this motor's been sitting for a really long time and when a motor sits for a really long time, you know like hard seals, like, like think of like a piston ring getting stuck or a valve getting stuck in a piston motor. And Rotary, it is generally the side seals or the apex seals or a corner seal that gets stuck. So like I said earlier in the video, I had a seal get stuck in that 13V and used ATF to get it free. So I got myself some of the cheapest ATF you can get at the parts store and just took this little filler cap right here off of a little gear oil bottle and I'm going to pour this into the motor just a little bit with spark plugs out and then I will turn the motor over by hand and periodically go and stick my fingers in the exhaust port to feel if the apex seals are stuck pushed in. So without further ado I'll get you all set up and you can go ahead and see me take the spark plugs out. Okay y'all for those of you who don't know all four of the spark plugs on these motors are actually on the driver's side um, then you have two different types of spark plugs you have your top ones which are your trailing which are essentially just to clean up for emissions then down here on the bottom you have your leading plugs which actually do the majority of the work so uh, when I get them out I'll show you the difference between how they look too um, so you got your ones up here for your front rotor, your rear rotor, and I'll go ahead and just see if I can pop this rear trailing loose, that one came loose, rear leading, and they should, you know, just come out, you uh, if they're really tight, you're going to want to be really careful, you don't want to take the threads in our here, uh, housings there, that would, that would really, really, really not be good, because uh, they are aluminum, so it is something that happens, especially stuff sits for a while, or if they were put in way too tight when they were originally put in. Now, judging how everything else has been done, there's been anti-seize on everything, so, and these came out really easy, I wouldn't be surprised, yep, there is anti-seize on the spark plugs. Okay, so this right here is a trailing. Let's see if we can get the focus. Come on. This is a trailing spark plug. So you can see this is actually a bit of an older design. It's got three prongs on the end instead of like one electrode and diode. So then I'll go ahead and I will get a leading pulled out for you. Now, like I said, they could have put the wrong plugs in, or the kind they got could just be the same. These are these are old. They're at least 15, maybe 20 years old. Okay, no. Yeah, they, they got the same for leading and trailing. Now, if you were to like look at an RX-8, a leading would have just one prong, and the trailing would actually have four, and they'd be iridium. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, turn the camera off now, and I'll get the other two spark plugs out. Okay guys, so I got all the spark plugs out, I looked at them a little bit, and they all seem to be looking pretty good. Not any major oil or anything on them, a nice good dark color. So, I'd say this motor was probably running pretty healthy when it was parked. So, it's a really good sign for this thing coming back to life. Now, I'm going to take my 
transmission fluid, cheapest stuff I could get. I'm gonna go ahead and squirt a little bit into each of the exhaust ports here. Uh, so I just, by squirting into the exhaust port, so y'all know with rotaries, there's no valves. So I literally just shot that directly into the motor. So now I'll be able to go through and turn it over and that will start to coat everything with ATF. So I'm probably gonna set y'all up with a time lapse here and I am going to go through and continually squirt this in and turn the motor over. So that brings me actually to turning the motor over. With a 12A like this, turn the motor over, just get yourself a big wrench and a 19 millimeter socket and you can put it right, sorry y'all, I'm gonna shake it a little bit, right up here. So you can see the white fan pulley. So there's a crank pulley right down here below it. You can just stick the wrench right onto that and then you can turn the motor over. So just take it like this, get the wrench down in here. Bolt. And get it on. I swear I'm not lying to y'all. I just did it. Let me see if I can get my hands down in here. Okay. Okay, so now it's on. And rotary engines, if you're looking at front, they turn clockwise. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just slowly by hand rotate the motor clockwise. And by doing that, you'll be pushing that ATF in the combustion chamber and you can get in the seals to move. So this motor is actually turning over really, really easy, which is good. So I will go ahead and leave that on there, shut you guys off and then restart y'all for a time lapse and you can watch me turn this motor over well for y'all it'll be short for me it'll be a really long time Okay everyone, so as y'all just saw, I went through and I turned the motor over a bunch by hand. So now I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to put the intake manifold on. So when you look down at this motor, you have seven ports here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one down here is an exhaust port. Intake, intake, intake. These are coolant. So originally, how these work is those right there flow coolant into the intake manifold and it's really kind of more of a just 
lets it idle better when it's cold, all that. But when you're actually performance driving, it heats up your intake manifold and makes your air hotter. So, reality, you don't want water going into this. So, there's a couple different things that you can do to prevent that. Uh, you can go and get yourself some grease plugs and put them in there. Or you can use something that everybody has lying around, and that is a quarter. Take a quarter, and it fits right on there. So all you need to do is go ahead, take you some RTV. Uh, I'm using black. It's hard to say what truly is the best RTV to use for this. I swear I think I've used a different type of RTV like every single time. So you take it and just go ahead and stick it down on there. Take you your other quarter. Dab some RTV on it. And take this quarter and cover up that one with it. So now you'll probably want to take some more RTV and dab it around the edges, but I'll do that when I put the intake manifold or the intake gasket on. So next, really, you just slap on your intake manifold gasket like this, and then you slide your intake manifold on. Now, I like to fully coat just a little bit of RTV over that entire gasket. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick, and then I will get back to you after I go ahead and coat that. Okay guys, so you can see I went ahead and put the gasket on there, and I went ahead and also coated this intake manifold in some RTV. So now I'll just take this, see there's two studs on there, those line up with these two bottom holes. slide it on there okay so it'll kind of hold off there for a second I went ahead and I cleaned up the bolts I'm gonna go ahead and stick these top two bolts in so it'll just kind of hold it in place there's one and this other one's a little tricky to get to I actually need a wrench to get it in there or at least just a socket with an extension because it's way up under here it's hard to reach with your fingers so again as I say fingers it's a long time uh, running joke between uh, some of my friends and myself but so just go ahead snug those up and then go ahead and stick the bottom two down in there. Right. And they should go in like really easy. This stuff lines up really well. So if it's not one to go in, it probably means there is something stuck inside of the uh, thread passages on the front and rear irons and that it needs to be cleaned out so you don't bugger everything all up because uh, if you do that it's gonna suck so put that in there so then you have these two nuts and these go on to the studs that were sticking out on there so a lot of times when you're taking the intake manifold off it can be really easy to forget about these two nuts on the sides and you'll be sitting there trying to pull it off and there's two more nuts. Uh, I say that because I have definitely done it to myself a time or two and I've taken a lot and I mean a lot of these intake manifolds off so now just take a wrench and just kind of get it as tight as you can with just holding it up here top all the way around 
And this is because we're using RTV. So the RTV needs to set for 24 hours or more. Uh, just snugged up for it to properly seal. And that's not a problem for me because I'm actually doing this right before I need to go home for the weekend because I need to go and help rebuild a RX-8 transmission for our Renesis swapped that one's good. Uh, endurance race car. And that's back in Atlanta, so I won't be back for over 24 hours. And when I get back, I'll be able to tighten this down, put the exhaust manifold back on, and I'll probably spin it over with the starter before I try and start with the spark plugs out, just to get all that ATF I put in earlier out, because if I just try to turn it over right now with spark plugs in, it uh, might not be super good for the motor because it would potentially create essentially too much compression, like, like hydro locking the motor because the ATF is not going to compress. Huh, that's interesting. Glad I just noticed that. that uh, that right there, so I'm sure most of y'all know, these motors inject oil into the combustion chamber to help lubricate the apex seals. And it does it with these lines in this little pump on the side of the motor called an oil metering pump. Well, I'm looking at it and it looks like this line right here is broken. It came out of its little uh, foot or whatever that it used to connect to the oil metering pump. So I will need to fix that or get a different line. I'll show y'all what I use on my street car. A lot of people tell me I'm really dumb for doing it. And I probably am because someday it's probably gonna bite me in the butt. But I'll show y'all what I do. And I think that's it for right now. So I'll get back to y'all when I'm tightening this intake manifold back down. Okay, mm -hmm. so we got the intake manifold on snugged it up uh i told y'all earlier i think that this video would probably be starting it up well this is a few days after i put the intake manifold on i started to edit the video and we're, it's already getting kind of long so i'm just going to show y'all the basics of what to do to put your exhaust manifold back on and then in the next video i'll turn it over and maybe start it next i'm going to keep teasing you we're going to keep going maybe someday it'll actually start the video but so when you're putting your exhaust manifold on pretty much same deal as the intake manifold you just want to take your gasket now yes this is a very used gasket but it's a multi-layer steel one so i feel comfortable using it uh just take your rtv and just oop that's a lot just slather that on there then go over here slather that on there because you see there's not really downside to overhang on this it'll just burn off and go out of your exhaust it's not going to get into your motor so now one thing to remember there are little exhaust ports down here these are not just open make sure you cover them like that okay so uh that's what you need to do for the rtv then you'll just slap this on and then just slide your exhaust manifold on and put it on I told you I was going to show you putting the studs back in, but really it's just twisting them back in. That's all you do. So I will go ahead and get these put in. Uh, that'll be the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe.